Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. I hope everybody's well. Now I just want to check my settings here for a minute. Um, so hold on. Okay, sorry, sorry to make it all jiggly, but I just, I'm trying to figure out how I can increase the volume because some people have been telling me that they're having trouble hearing me. And so, I just want to turn it up all the way. If if you're if you can hear me well, let me know. I'd like to know if that made a difference. Today we're going to be painting these beautiful sunflowers and I'll tell you all the way. And I'll tell you what, it was a tough decision. There were so many things blooming in the garden today and um, I'm going to have to speed things up a little bit if I want to capture all the different flowers that I want to paint this season. But these just started opening and they're just so cheerful and beautiful and I love the color. They are, uh, I think they're called Helenium. Um, I, I should check that and uh, put that, I'll note that in the book after I paint them. But aren't they, aren't they great? They're just, what nicer symbol of summer than these beautiful, cheerful flowers. So I'm opening up my garden journal and I'm going to find a new page. So here we go. And my idea for today is I wanted to create a design that sort of filled this area, sort of a V-shape in the center of the fold here. And, um, and I'm not going to finish it today. I'm going to, I'm going to do a loose sketch using a pencil and then I'll paint one of these flowers. And, I, and the other reason why I wanted to paint these flowers in particular is because I think they're perfect for someone who's just starting out because it's a very simple shape, very simple brush strokes, and, um, and I think you'll, um, you'll be able to have some very good results very quickly and, and uh, we want to build up your confidence. If you're somebody who's been struggling with watercolor or has always wanted to learn and never had the time, then this is a, a great way to get started. So I've got three colors, yellow, red, and blue. And with these three colors, you'll be able to mix a full spectrum. So when you mix your yellow and blue, you'll get some beautiful greens, you'll get your oranges, and you'll get your violet. So full spectrum of color. And um, these particular flowers are kind of a, what I would call a deep yellow, almost an orange. So they're gonna be a lot of fun to paint. So let's see, everybody's out there, hi. And you can hear me, excellent. Hello, Kelly, hi, Ginger. Gosh, it seems like it's been a really long time. I hope you had a nice weekend and um, had some fun activities for the holidays. I started um, walking a couple of weeks ago, and today I had my first three mile long walk, and it, it whipped me. <laughs> it's very hot here today. It's in the 80s, the sun is blazing, it's a little humid because we had a lot of rain. So those conditions are not the ones that um, work well for my walking because I, I do much better with a uh, cool 
I like it when it's uh, sprinkling a little bit. A little bit of rain really helps. So, anyway. Anybody else out there on a um, on an exercise routine? Somebody starting like I am? I'm just getting back to it. I used to do a lot of exercising when I was younger, but I got away from it. And then with COVID, everything really took a dive. So I'm, I'm working hard at, at getting back to where I'm comfortable because uh, now is, it's now or never. All right, so there's the beginning of, of one flower. And I know it's really light. Let me see if, you, if I zoom you in, if you can see it a little bit better. Maybe if I move this. Hang on, I'm going, I'm going to move some things around here. There, there you can see a little bit better. All right, I'm just putting this um, paper towel on the right side here so I have a place where I can put my palette once I start painting. But before I, before I do that, I wanna get a, an idea of how this is going to be. So as I said, it's going to be a kind of a V shape And then I thought maybe um, trailing down at the bottom, I would have some leaves and maybe even introduce some of the, um, the uh, flowers I have that are more vining flowers. But first I wanna get these established. All right, and then I think I'll put this one over here. And I am, you know, I'm looking at the flowers in front of me, and they, they make a beautiful arrangement, but what I'm doing is I'm moving them around to suit the design that I wish to establish here. So... Um, don't be afraid to have fun with your specimens and move them around. Um, look at them in, in different light. You can also do a quick sketch ahead of time, a quick study, just to um, a little thumbnail, just to see how it, how it looks. You can do it in a, um, a value study, just one color tone, maybe a, a nice neutral gray. Or you can um, do a, a kind of an abstract um, color study and just practice mixing the colors to see what colors um, look right to you and and how they look with with the other colors that you're using you know and that's another thing that you can tweak you can tweak your your colors a little bit to make them suit what it is that you're doing I try to stay pretty close to nature um, but that doesn't mean that um, I'm willing to try something different. So um, just, you know, taking a few minutes ahead of time to try a few things out can be really helpful. All right, so I've got, um, I've got four flowers sort of sketched out here. And I'm gonna turn my bouquet around a little bit and get a different one. And this one, I'm going to have very close to the center so here's the center of my flower. And 
And these are, this is not a very careful drawing, okay? It's, it's really, it's really just to help me de to define the overall shape of things. And, um, and to keep me in, when I, once I start painting, to keep me in the areas that I want my design to be. Okay, now this one's really getting stuck in the gutter here, but that's okay. Okay, so there, so now I have, um, let's see if you can see this. So there we go. So I've got one, two, three, four, five flowers. I've got one leaf here. And what I want to do is add a few more leaves because I don't want to be just yellow. I want to get some green on there. And, um, and also some stems. It would be fun to have some stems. So let's put one over here. I've already got one there. These stems would probably be covered up. I could have a leaf coming up through here. And um, these are the kind of leaves that have a wonderful toothy edge to them. So they're a lot of fun to paint and, and they look really nice. And I'm looking for the center axis of my leaf. where that center vein is. And, um, and then I will add a few other details as I go along. I've got a little friend there, tiny, teensy tiny mite. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, begin by uh, putting my first wash down. And for that, I'm going to use, let me get that guy out of there. Go, he's determined, he's on a mission. There he goes. Okay. I'm going to use my pale yellow for the first wash. I'm going to um, zoom you out a tiny bit so that you you can see the whole thing. And I'll pull this down. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to start there. So I'm just, all I'm doing is um, taking some yellow from my palette and there is a little bit of red in there. I'll show you what that looks like. So you see I've got some red on my palette that's mixing with my yellow and that's okay because um, there's going to be some red in this yellow for these flowers. But to begin with I'm going to be using plenty of water, a little bit of paint, and I'm going to have to move this over a little bit so I don't put my arm in it. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and leave my paper towel to keep the, the page from getting any drips on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and just put a an initial wash of color. And I think what I'll do to save time is I will, I will put this wash over the entire design, but then I'll, I'll just start working on, on one flower for today, just so that you can see me um, complete one flower. And I'm using the same yellow on my leaves. And I'm just flooding the whole area. The, the binding media that's in the watercolor is gum arabic and what happens is when you do a, uh, a light wash like this over your design it also sets the graphite or the pencil line so that um, you can no longer erase it. So if you have any kind of erasing that you want to do with your initial sketch, you want to make sure that you get that erasing done before you apply the color. Because once the color's on there, 
it acts like uh, the binding media acts like glue. The binding media is the thing that binds the pigments to your paper. It's a little bit tricky getting into that that gutter between the pages, but I'm not too concerned. This is just sketchy is okay. This is my sketchbook. These are not meant to be masterpieces. Okay, it's just um, a fun way for me to get some ideas to have a, have a great time painting. I mean, really, that's the major benefit is just the fun of doing it, and later. I'll be able to use my book for journaling or whatever I want, and I'll have all these beautiful paintings in it to, um, to decorate the pages. How many of you are painting along with me? Is anybody um, following along? Are you painting with me? Do you have a uh, garden journal? And um, how's it going? Are you having fun? Do you like this? Would you like to see more of this kind of thing on the on the channel? All right, so now that I can start to see the overall shape, I can see some places where I'm going to want to have some green. So um, I can I can add a, a leaf shape over here behind these petals. I'm just painting, I'm just drawing with my brush, getting that in there, and I'll probably want another one pointing down in this direction. Here we go. All right, so that's the first wash. Um, I will put a little bit of green on the leaves just um, to help help remind me where those leaves are and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some um, some areas in the um, where the veins are because the veins are a little bit lighter so if I look closely at my leaf I can see that there are a lot of nice sort of side veins so I'm going to go ahead and leave a little line for those things. And I'm just, I'm just picking out a few, not every single one. And if I look, I can see that they are not opposite one another. So the side veins actually stem from the center vein in an alternate pattern. So I can sort of indicate that a little bit and I can go right up the center of my leaf and I'm painting on either side of that of that center vein so that that pale yellow initial wash that I put down is still there. Okay, I'll give you a close-up of that. It's a little messy, it's sketchy, but that's okay. I'm just getting it established. So there you can see how I've left some of those areas, just that pale yellow to begin to indicate where some of those veins are. While the paper is still damp, I can just add a little more darker, stronger green in some of the shadow areas, and that's just going to blend nicely with what I've already got down there because the paper is still a little bit damp. All right, so there's the beginning of one leaf. I'm going to leave that alone now. And um, I think what I'll do is I'll paint 
this flower today because um, you'll be able to see that best, I think, on the camera. So I'm going back into my yellow mixture, this time less water, stronger paint, a little more color um, with uh, an addition of the red. And I need to turn this, turn my specimen. There we go. I'm just going to get the center started. And in, in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to check, see if there's any questions. So if you have any questions, just please go ahead and uh, put them in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them. This flower is mostly in shadow, so I'm making these petals a little bit darker. And then what happens is as the light begins to illuminate them a little bit, I'm just going to let that lighter yellow come through. So the tips of some of these petals are in light. And then these top petals are almost entirely in light except for where they sort of curl around and come back down into the center. Now what I tell my students in my watercolor classes is one, two, three painting, okay? Three steps, lights, mediums, and darks. So think about your tonality. Um, and if you're somebody who's interested in learning more about my online watercolor classes, please go to dandeliancottagedesign.com and subscribe to Notes. And I will also put that link below um, after the live video is done. And if you subscribe to Notes, you'll be notified when my online classes start. So I have them all throughout the year. I've got a new one that I'm just about to start up. And so this is the perfect time to get on that list so that you can learn much more. All right, now the center of my flowers are mostly yellow, but they have some um, dark brown stamens, and, or uh, anthers, I should say. So the anthers are the little multi extra um, detail that you see in the center of the flower. So I'm just mixing up some red and some blue and some yellow until I get the color I'm looking for. And I'm just going to drop that in and just let that move. All right. And then finally, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my brush. So I've been using a number seven. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. And this is a number four. 
and I'm going to use this to put some of the um, the pleats in these petals and um, and I'll also show you the flower again in just a second but um, the petals actually have these beautiful kind of long ruffles and I want to I want to capture that idea and because my my flower is starting to dry now I can begin to add a little more detail in here I can also indicate where one petal overlaps another you see there's several areas where that's happening and get a little more yellow on my brush and get in the tips and I'm just helping these colors to to move and mingle a little bit just using a damp brush to kind of pull that paint around a little bit all right so there we go so my flower is basically established now what I need to do though is to put in a couple of dark accents so I'm going to go back to my to my violet mixture and this time I'm going to add a little of that violet into that brown that I made a second ago. And I'm just going to put some of that in there. All right, and then I'll go back to that leaf. And I'll just, um, since I've got the little brush in my hand, I can begin to Do a little more careful painting of that edge with the serrated or the toothy bits. And I can add a little more detail to these veins. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit better. And, um, and this area over here is quite dark. That's in shadow. So I can mix my yellow and green, but this time add a little more blue to the mixture so that it's darker. And that's, that's going to look much darker than the green that I already have on there. All right, let's see if, there's, if anybody has any questions or comments. And I don't see any. Here's Sandra. She says she has this, the same uh, flower, Sandra, in the hundreds. Oh, and oh, no, 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 she's talking about the temperature. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot. I, I bet you only, that's why I went out for my walk early today and what a difference it made. So that's going to be my new plan. All right. Well, I don't see any questions right now. So my, um, my paper is still a little bit damp, so I'm not going to be able to put in a lot of detail, but I will, I will try, I'll just check to see if I can do a little something. No, too wet. All right, well, you, you will see the detail in the thumbnail 
then after um, after I post this. So that's um, that's how I would go about starting painting these flowers, and um, of course I do a better job on this leaf. The other thing that's happening here is that I'm using the leaf as a foil in the in back of these petals. So you see these two petals are in front of the leaf, and as I add more color it's going to help to define the shape of those petals better so a little back and forth painting and actually i think i i'm going to make an adjustment here i want this leaf to be bigger because these these leaves are pretty leaves are a pretty good size so I'm going to bring this one all the way down to the center there. All right, there we go. So I'm going to zoom out now so you can get a better look. Move my paper towel. Okay, so um, so that's the beginning of my of of this design for this spread, and I really like it. I like the idea of having this come down like this, and then maybe I'll have some sort of um, alternate flower color, like uh, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe the cow vetch or something that I see outside, and then I may add a little bit of a border along the top and that's going to give me two nice areas for um, writing or further decoration or whatever I decide. So I'll bring you back in a little. So there it is. Here's my, here's my specimen, one of them. That's a big one. Let's see if I can get a little smaller one here so you can see it. There we go. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today. I will be back next week for Watercolor Wednesday at 1 o'clock, and that's Eastern Standard Time. And tomorrow I will be back with Paper Crafting Thursday at 1 o'clock. So I hope to see you then. Stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.